In this episode, 50 Shades of the Elimination Diet. No whips, no chains, and none of those little metal balls that you put up your puss puss. Just straight nutrition knowledge nukes. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. The bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Test. Testing. Test, test, testing, testing, test, 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 Ickles, test, Ickles. Welcome everyone to episode 654 of the Daily Mother, a swole, the most muscular swole cast, beard cast, broad cast, gain cast, man cast, slut cast, pimp cast, nipple cast, hairy chest cast, and bicep cast in the realm, because when I flex, you flex, we all flex our biceps. What is up, bitches? What's up, Beaches? What's going on? Instagram Live, Facebook Live, and of course, all the episodes, YouTube, but even more importantly, all the episodes on SoundCloud, Apple Podcast, and also on Google Music, whatever the hell, whatever the hell Google does, but that's for, <laughs> that's for, that's for peasants, right? Yeah, who, who use it? I mean, come on, Google Music, Google Music, really, really? SoundCloud or Apple Podcast is the bee's knees. No, I'm kidding. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. And maybe if Spotify's nice, maybe if Spotify gets their shit together, they'll put Papa Swolio on. But for now, I'm everywhere else. And I'm here. And that's the most important thing. So I have my coffee, if you want to believe that this is coffee. Mmm. Mmm. Ah, and today's episode 654 is 50 Shades of the Elimination Diet. 50 Shades of the Elimination Diet. And 50 Shades of the Elimination Diet without the whips, without the chains, without the leather, and without those little metal balls that you put in the puss puss. Just straight knowledge nukes about nutrition. How do you drink your coffee? Well, uh, Juan Martinez on Facebook, I drink it bulletproof. I put butter and oil because I'm a fucking freak. That's what I do. And actually, if anyone's interested in how I make my coffee, you can Google it or you can check my highlights on my Instagram story because I have uh, a few videos of me making it. Oh, Papa Solio's gassy. So I just banged out an amazing leg workout. I just went live in uh, Swolnormous X Premium Facebook group. We just did our little accountability meeting that we do every week. So that was awesome. Took the dog for a walk. It's raining outside. I have to poop, but I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold it for you because the Daily Swole is more important. I would have gone first, but then I went live and all of a sudden it's like I hit the live button. I'm like, "Uh uh-oh. And then, you know, it's kind of like too late. So, you know, (laughs) I'll just forget about it. And then, you know, it'll remind me later. I'm sure of it. (laughs) T-Bor, what's going on? What's up? Aaron Starwhite, Starwhite, Starwhite with a cup. Papa Soya with a cup. So, I did a little poll, a little poll ski on um, Instagram ski, and it was like three to one, three to one people loving the evening swole. So are you an evening swole fan? Everyone said that, oh, I love the evening swole, but then where is everyone? Where is everyone? <laughs> you said you love the evening swole, but then you're not going to show up. Anyway, so what has occurred to me is that it almost doesn't fucking matter when I go live. The most important thing is that I'm giving you daily nukes. I'm giving you daily content. I'm sticking my knowledge fist deep inside whatever orifice you prefer. And I'm just giving you fucking knowledge, just fucking in straight to the taint, male or female. I'm giving it to you how you like it. And that's what we do on the daily swole. It gets a little bit, maybe it gets a little crazier in the evening. Cause like the sun goes down and the weirdness comes out. It don't matter. That's what I'm, that's what I'm realizing. I think for so long, I was so, I wouldn't say paranoid, but I held myself to such a strict standard of 12 noon, 12 noon, which was cool. But now I want to, I want to branch out. Like this is going to be good for me. It's going to be good for everyone. We're going to hit new people are going to come in. New people are going to see the swole, but here's the most important thing. Just before we get started with some of the content, make sure that you turn on the, um, make sure you turn on your notifications. Josh Hamstra. Yeah. Watch at a later date. There you go, man. Can't please everyone. Can't please everyone, so watch it later. You got it, man. That's why I record it and fucking put it on every damn platform that exists. So what happened to noon? I just told you, bruh. I just told you. I don't think everyone thought it was for tonight. I don't, you know what? I just realized I don't give a shit what people think or thought. 
I want to do what I want to do. And that's why I started all of this. That's why I started the Daily Swole. And it's still the Daily Swole. It's still the Daily Swole. So that's what's most important. That's what's most important. Um, yeah, you know what? Go work in the morning, then go to sleep. It doesn't mean it's going to be at 11 o'clock every night, just or what tonight is at 11 o'clock. Yesterday it was at nine. Doesn't mean it's going to be in the evening every night. It could still be at noon. Here's the thing because we're going to start doing some giveaways. If you all remember, if you used to watch, remember the Daily Swole Club, we're going to start giving away some t shirts, having some uh, cool things. So it's like little bonuses for joining in live that you're only going to be able to get when you're live. So just make sure that you turn on your notifications. And what the problem has been is that, and I'm not complaining, but there's there's algorithm changes. Instagram and Facebook changes what they do fucking all the time like that. So business pages and fan pages have uh, been a lot more, there's a lot more restrictions for what you're going to see. So they blocked it off. So you're not going to get the same notifications. Just make sure if you're interested in catching this live, you go to the top of the page and you adjust your notifications. So you can adjust it. Everyone's complaining to me, well, I don't get my notifications in time when you go live uh, because you don't set your notifications to prioritize this page. So same thing for Instagram. You go to the three dots in the top right corner of my page. You turn on notifications. So you get notified immediately when I go live or when I post a picture. And on Facebook, you do the same thing. Go to the top, go to the pull down menu and prioritize the um, the live broadcast. I think it's even better because you have to be on top of it. You get an alert, you catch me live, catch me live, catch me live. So for everyone that can't watch me in the evening, the same amount of people can't watch me in the morning, but I've done the polls, I've asked, and everyone seems to love the evening times better. So that just means that I can be a little more liberal with when I go live and I'm going to have some fun with it. I'm going to have some fun with it and I enjoy it. I'm enjoying it so far and more people are tuning in. So that just means positivity all the way. I love the live in the evening. All right. Everyone's loving it. So uh, it doesn't mean it's going to be in the evening all the time. And I think it's even better. What time is it with you now? Goldilocks beast right now. It is exactly 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock PM, 11 PM. Yeah. I'm going to be up late tonight because I have a ton of stuff to upload. I have some I want to get that yoga. I want to get that yoga class uploaded and the virtual training uploaded to Swolnormous X. There's a bunch of stuff I want to get done tonight. I mean, either I'm going to be up all night or I'm not going to be up all night, but I'm going to get a lot of stuff done. I have some plans. I have things I want to do. So, yeah, so today's episode is going to be more nutrition based, but I'll take some questions. I'll keep it a little bit casual right now. We'll get started in just a moment. Everyone's tuning in, everyone's getting those notifications. I don't like to hit the ground running. So, if you're watching this, after the fact, not that you want to miss the beginning because there's always some cool shit going on at the beginning, but I have people saying, well, the first fucking five minutes was a waste. I have people on YouTube, stupid fucking cocksuckers on YouTube. Oh, well, that was a fucking waste. Scroll to 10 minutes because the first 10 minutes was fucking bullshit. Um, it's a live pro it's a live broadcast jabroni. If I just fucking hit play and start talking, no one's going to catch it. People have to get a notification. They have to sit down. They have to scratch their balls and sit down and then tune in. It has to load up. It has to synchronize. It's like, what the fuck do you think happens? What do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> like, like, what do you think? Like, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think goes on with the live broadcast? It's just because no one does live like Papa Swolio. No one goes live so regularly like Papa Swolio. Everyone does videos. There are a lot of people that do videos every day. Fucking amateurs. Try going live every day. Try rocking and spitballing live. You can't edit this shit. And I don't edit, I don't edit shit when I upload it. Every once in a while I have to splice something because the camera might turn off after a certain amount of time, but I don't fucking edit shit. You get it? I I thrive on ooh, I like that. I thrive on live. For a little, you know, if I don't go live, it's like, yeah, I love the live. I love the fucking energy. I just love the fact that everyone's here and this is now and this is what's going on. That's the deal. Chris Salazar, it's never too late to get your swole on. Fucking A. Let's see who's uh, Ralph Ramirez. I want a shirt. Never miss your show. It's not a lifestyle. It's life. Want that shirt with your face and that beast of a beard. <laughs> you know, when I wear it, like if I go to the bank or something, the teller one time was like, that picture on your shirt looks like you. I'm like, it is fucking me. It's Papa Swolio. You don't know who fucking Papa Swolio is? You don't know who fucking Papa Swolio is? I got recognized in a parking lot. I, I posted this on Instagram. I got recognized the other day. It was fucking insane. 
Like I was just sitting in a parking lot with my shirt off, just texting, you know, killing some time. And someone's like, Swolnormous? I'm like, fuck me. Fuck me. <laughs> I got I got And I just realized, I'm like, you notice me just wearing my glasses without a shirt on? And I realized, well, I'm fucking always wearing my glasses without a shirt on on social media. So I guess that's, if I wear a shirt, no one's going to know who the hell I am, right? The teller obviously doesn't lift. Taste my freedom. Ooh, dude, I like that name. Taste my freedom. I love your vibe on live. Fuck yeah. The only problem is right now with the camera angle, you can't see the two American flags. Taste my freedom. But I got, I got two fucking flags of freedom right here. Um, but just my double broadcast setup. If I go horizontal, I'm gonna have to hold. I'm gonna have to really fucking manipulate shit. Uh, actually, that's another poll that I want to do. Whether guy, whether or not you guys like the vertical, the portrait, or the landscape. I used to do all landscape, and then I realized people aren't gonna hold their phone sideways. It's harder to text. So I do the. Um, so I do it all. There you go. You can taste my freedom. You can see a little bit of the flag over there. There's another one on the other side. Um, whether or not you like landscape or portrait. I think it's just easier to hold your phone. It's just natural. It's like ergonomic. I'm just moving around a little bit. Okay, uh, let's take another couple another comments, and then I'll just get into some of the content that I want to get into. Brian Soto, thanks for the late live nukes. I watch all the time, but I work mornings in a clean room, so I can't catch on the AM Swolecast. That's the AM Swolecast. So 12 noon was just a cool thing to say. Every day, 12 noon Eastern time. And it's cool to have a set show, but this isn't fucking NBC. I have a life. And what happened is it was just starting to interfere a little bit with my flow. Sometimes it was a little bit inhibitory and having to do that at that time was affecting my ability to get other shit done that's important. So the Daily Swole stays and I want to do live. I don't want to get shitty audio. I don't want to not be double live. I want to keep the integrity of the show. So uh, I'll just keep it a little bit more flexible. Plus at 12 noon on the west coast in california it's 9 a.m not everyone can watch at 9 a.m my 14 year old daughter steals my shirt to power lift in tammy you need another shirt that's unacceptable you have to wear a shirt so you can go support her during her power lifting all right so look in the board behind me instagram is going to be flipped because instagram doesn't do like the flip thing i don't know why i can't reverse the camera it's fucking stupid but behind me let me see what it says 50 shades of elimination, 50 shades of elimination. Let's talk a little bit more elimination diet. I want to clarify something because I had a couple conversations on the phone with uh, some new Solnormous X members and they were asking about uh, the elimination diet and can they eliminate a couple foods? Like, is it the same thing or what are the, you know, what if they only eliminate, let's say peanut butter, for example, I think that was one of the examples, peanut butter and bread. So when it comes to the elimination diet, the full-blown elimination, all that means is you're eliminating things systematically. You're eliminating specific foods for at least four to six weeks so you can test your sensitivity after that time period. Now, that being said, the more you eliminate, the better you can tell what is bothering you. So let's say you're eating, let's say you just you eat 50 different foods and you only eliminate one for six weeks. Maybe you eliminated the one that doesn't bother you. You're still eating 10 of the other ones. So the more foods that you eliminate from the start, the more you can systematically test them and then get the full picture. And one of the things for the elimination diet that's really important is you might not notice. You might not notice the issues because your body has adapted to consuming that food. Your body has built up those defense mechanisms. So I want to repeat that one more time. You might eat a food, okay? I'm letting that sink in. You might eat a food every single fucking day and not see any issues from it. However, that food might be a major inflammatory for you. Your body has just adapted to it and you don't notice the bloating, the joint pain, the migraines and shit coming from that because your body has defended itself for 30 fucking years. That is the purpose of the elimination diet and it's kind of scary. It doesn't make sense until you try it. So I really want to see some comments below. So Facebook, Instagram, comment below if there's a food that you eliminate. If you try the, if you're, especially those of you that are in Swanormous X, if you've tried the elimination diet, and you have done this, what is your experience 
with eliminating a food that you may might have never noticed an issue from. And all of a sudden you eliminate it and holy crap, it's crushing you now. I want to know examples. So if you've had that, comment below, give us some details because I want to read them out loud. I want to give you a shout out and explain because it's better coming. It's one thing coming from a bearded fucking freak. It's one thing coming from me. It's one thing coming from people that have done it because of what I've been preaching, right? Um, Taste my freedom on Instagram. Interesting. If it defends against it and built up a resistance, is it still inflammatory? That's a great question. That's a great question. So just to paraphrase that or to reword that, if your body has built up defenses and you don't notice it, is it still inflammatory? And the answer is yes, because your body is still fighting an inflammatory reaction. So when you're consuming an inflammatory food, what happens is it's causing things like inflammation in your gut, which is causing gaps in the intestines, which is getting through and your body is reacting poorly to it. When you have an invader, like a virus or a bacteria, you have something that shouldn't, that you have something in your body, like in your bloodstream, for example, that is there that shouldn't be there. Your body is going to protect itself. Let's get back to the basics. Let's get back to the foundation. Your body is designed for survival. Your body is here to, literally, all your body is here to do is to live to see tomorrow. You're here on earth I know we want to think we have some higher purpose and, oh, what's the meaning of life? The meaning of life is to fuck and die and just perpetuate the species. Literally, literally. Why do you think that's what, that's like the big, the big fucking twist with human, with, with all of us. Like we try to be like, oh my God, too much nudity, this, that, and the other. Yet everything is built around sex. We're so fucking twisted in the brain. Everything is built around sex yet we cover it up and like, don't show the nipples, cleavage, you know, that's inappropriate for kids, blah, blah, blah. But the only thing we're here on earth to do is to fuck, make more babies and then die. So the species continues. That's really all that we are designed to do. Survive, fuck, make more of us. And then we die. The other ones live on. Like we don't know really what is going on. We could be a cell on a big organism. We're in space. It's ever expanding. We don't know 90% of what the fuck is out there. It's all dark matter, which isn't really matter. We have no idea what the fuck it is. Is it gravitational waves? I don't know how much all of you look into this stuff. We have no fucking idea what we're doing or where we are or what the hell is going on. We just try to make reason of it. So we have like nine to fives and jobs and taxes and this, that, and the other. It means nothing. It really means nothing. It means absolutely fucking nothing. So human beings, we're an animal, we're a species. We have higher thought. We have iPhones. We're a fucking animal. We're an animal, right? So we're here to fuck and make more babies. Literally, we're here to fuck and make and make more babies, which is why people keep fuck, which is why people keep fucking and making more babies. Don't get me started on why people should stop fucking because a lot of people are fucking that should not be fucking. And a lot of people are having babies that holy shit should not be having babies. I'm just going to come out and say it. I see way too many people like, wow, that fucktard should not have reproduced. And those same fucktards comment on some of my videos and make fun of like my beard and my man bun. I'm like, I really hope you didn't have a child. And I look at their profile picture. I'm like, oh shit, he fucking reproduced. Damn it weakening the species by the moment. So that being said, that's really all. Why do you think everything is built around sex? So the human body and our existence is here to survive, survive and fuck. That's it. So to hide that fact and to pretend like we're not just trying to bang everything in sight and just trying to have babies all the time. It's really an illusion. That's really all we're wired to do. That's why that's all we want to do. And then we try to like stifle that and pretend like we want to have a career in this. It's really just like, I want to fuck that. I want to fuck that. I want to fuck that. I want to have babies. I want to have babies. We protect We have to take birth control. We wear condoms. We try to block babies, try to block babies, try to block babies. Why do you think we have all these things that try to block babies? Because we just fucking, every impulse we have is just to fucking reproduce. So that being said, we're just trying to survive. So your body, let's get back to the elimination diet, right? Your body is just trying to survive. Your body is literally just trying to survive. So it's going to defend itself in order to protect against whatever invaders you're consuming. And if your body, oh, this coffee is making me burp, quote, unquote. Mm. 
Mmm. Mmm. Oh, fuck me. That's good coffee. Ah, oh, where was I? So your body is trying to defend itself. Yeah? And your body is not going to live in pain. So what your body will do is literally build soldiers. Your body will create soldiers. Your body will create defense mechanism, me- mechanisms to prevent or to protect against invaders, to protect against the inflammatory foods you're consuming. In order to minimize the effects, your body doesn't want to be in pain. Your body doesn't want to have joy and pain. Your body doesn't want to suffer from this. However, comment below, comment below if you have chronic pain. 90% of people, especially in the United States, have lower back pain at least once in their life. Do you have chronic pain? Do you have chronic pain? And the reason why I'm asking that is because your chronic pain, you are not feeling it the way it really is in your body. When you have chronic back pain or chronic knee pain or shoulder pain or elbow pain, you learn to live with it. Now, how do you learn to live with it? Your body deals with that shit. Your body learns to ignore the pain. Your body learns to brush it off. Your body learns to handle it. And if it doesn't go away, your body is going to perceive the pain differently. It's going to say, well, I keep sending pain signals, but Dash isn't doing anything about it. And eventually, I won't perceive that pain as severe as when it started. You get used to it. That's what's called adaptation. You get used to the pain. So, for example, when I train hard, it might murder someone else. You might not be able to keep up with me in the gym. However, I am used to it because I've built up to this point. I've adapted. So you're going to adapt to pain. You're going to adapt to feeling pain. And anyone that has dealt with chronic pain, it doesn't mean you don't feel pain, period. It just means that your your perception of that pain is less than, for example, if I felt that, I'd be like, oh my God, I can barely fucking move. But you've been dealing with it for 20 years, so you're used to feeling that pain, so you don't see it as the same level of pain. Your body kind of, it's dulled down because you're used to it, right? You just get used to that pain. Uh, So that's why when you have inflammation, even though you have defenses, you might not notice the bloating directly. It doesn't mean you don't have inflammation. It just means you have essentially a Band-Aid in your body. The antibodies that your body has created to protect itself from those inflammatory foods is essentially a essentially a physiological Band-Aid. It's a physiological Band-Aid that your body has created. And you absolutely still have inflammation. And the reason for that also is you have those stress hormones elevated. Cortisol will go up. You'll retain more water. You'll store more fat. You still have those inflammatory reactions. You still have those white blood cells. Whatever gets, whatever the situation is specifically in your body, you're still going to have that response inside your body. You're still going to have that response. So even though you might not notice it, it could be low level. When you remove that food for about six weeks and then you bring it back and let's say that food is causing you problems, you are going to notice it night and day. And you're going to realize that foods, that's what I was asking you before, if you had this experience, you were going to notice foods that you never thought, you've been having milk for 30 years. You've been eating cereal since you were three years old. And all of a sudden you have it now after six weeks of removing it and it fucks your day up. You're on the toilet all day. You're bloated. You have stomach cramps. You have gas. You feel, you have migraines. Some people have violent reactions for bringing back wheat, wheat germ, gluten in, gluten period, all these different things that you might eliminate. And I posted something in, I think it was on my Instagram page or I forget where it was. Uh, one of the members eliminated wheat and grains and stuff that I've been talking about. His back pain went away, went away. So obviously it was very inflammatory to him. Doesn't mean you have celiacs, but you still have an inflammatory reaction. And that could be a combination. And everyone's going to feel things differently. That's why a full elimination diet is really important because you will find out once and for all what's best for your body specifically. So that is the reason why I don't like to say, here, eat these things. That's why Papa Swoyo doesn't have a diet plan. What do you eat, Papa Swoyo? What do you eat? That's why I don't say any of these fucking stupid 30-day challenges. I've been seeing this stuff. I don't know what the fuck is going on. All these little 30-day challenges, 30-day challenge, March challenge, challenge yourself, join my challenge group. 
oh, 30 fucking days, what? And then I get dropped on my ass. I do extreme shit for 30 fucking days. That's why I take a foundational approach to improve your life, not just your lifestyle, not your fitness for 30 days. Let me do a 30-day challenge. What, you lose 10 pounds? Great, congratulations. Now what? All these extreme, all these sprints don't work. You know what it does? It makes whoever you're signing up, whoever you're giving money to, it, it, it makes them money. It makes them money because it sounds like, okay, accountability, a challenge. I'm going to be held accountable. Ooh, a cash prize of $1,000, of $2,000. Ooh, I can win this. I can win that. What are you, a fucking child? Like what's more important than being healthy because you need to live longer and live healthier? That's why I take the approach of everyone asks me, do you have a diet plan? I have something better than a fucking diet plan. First off, fuck your diet plan with both fingers straight up your asshole. Fuck your diet plan. I am going to help guide you to determine exactly, exactly, and fuck the blood test too, exactly what foods your body reacts best to, what foods your body hates, and then I'm going to help you figure out what eating style is best for your life. Do you like intermittent fasting? Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. I'm a fan sometimes. Sometimes I'm not. I go back and forth, which is also fine. Do you want to do ketosis? You can try it. Do you want to try vegetarianism, veganism? Go for it. But what I'm going to make sure of is that you don't eat shitty foods that your body fucking hates. Because if your body hates beans, then guess what? I don't care if you're a vegan or vegetarian, paleo, um, I don't know, like whatever. You're not going to be eating beans because it doesn't matter what style of eating, intermittent fasting, intermittent fasting and then eating beans from 6 to 8 p.m. is still going to fuck your world up because beans don't work for you. That's what's really important. It's really important to understand what foods your body reacts to. So going into one of these challenges or buying a diet plan that says eat six ounces of salmon, you know, which is probably farmed. It has no fucking benefit or eat three ounces of this and one cup of rice and one cup of this and one cup of that. You might have, you might get results. You start counting macros. You start weighing shit. You start nitpicking and weighing and measuring. You're going down the wrong path. I promise you. I promise you. Does that mean, does that mean that you can't measure food? Does that mean you can't count calories? Of course not. Calories have their place. I mean, the measurements are, I mean, calories are calories. However, if you're eating the wrong calories, anyone that tells you otherwise is just ignorant or lying to you. If you're eating bad foods, if you're eating bad foods, I don't care if you're eating 100 calories or 500 calories, it's fucking you up to some extent. Poison is poison. And when I say poison, I'm not talking about freaking like anthrax. I'm talking about foods that your body views as an invader, which is essentially poison. And your body is going to have a reaction. So 100 calorie cookie packs or, oh, well, I'm only having this rice cake. Okay, well, maybe your body fucking hates rice cakes. You wouldn't know that because you've been eating them almost every day for 30 years. But what about eliminating them? Oh, but I love my rice cakes, but it's so hard. And meh. Then cry me a fucking river and stay fat. Like make the moves. All I'm saying is I want to educate you and I want to lead you to figure out what's best for you. What's best for you? And I feel from a foundational level that it's absolutely not only irresponsible, it's borderline negligent and criminal to recommend diet plans to anyone and say, eat these foods. I think that's almost borderline. I think it almost should be fucking illegal. I don't care if you're a nutritionist. If you're not implementing some type of allergic test, some type of intolerance test, some type of elimination process to figure out what's going on, nothing's perfect, but at least with that approach, you're doing the client, you're doing yourself, you're doing a disservice. And that's just really my honest opinion. And I could easily create the swole normous diet plan and say, eat this beef and then have a sweet potato and this, that, and the other. Why? Why? 
Some people are allergic to beef for whatever fucking reason. They have an allergic reaction. That means it might work for 20 people and it might fuck up five. I'm not willing to help 20 people and fuck five people up. I'm not willing to have collateral damage when it's not necessary. I'd rather have only 10 people. I'd rather have, instead of 20 people join my community, I'd rather have 10 people and they approach it the right way because I can do that with a clear conscience. That's why I push my shit so hard. That's why I'm so passionate about it because I believe in it. And I don't like selling fucking diet plans. I just don't feel like, I feel like it's so individualized and that no one really knows enough about it to say, eat these things. Because then you start playing the caloric restriction game, you start counting shit, and then it's just a fucking miserable lifestyle. Oh, well, I don't eat too many calories. I eat 1,500 calories a day. I eat 1,700 calories a day. I eat this many calories a day. Oh, fuck that shit. Fuck that. Eating ca- Counting calories is bullshit. Your body, if you're eating the right foods for you, your body regulates calories. You'll know when you're full. You'll know when you're hungry. And you don't have to count calories. If you get rid of the inflammatory foods, you're going to lose water weight and body fat just by getting rid of the shit that your body is defending itself against. You're fucking yourself up and float some hearts and drop some comments below if you've had this experience. Forget counting calories. You've done an elimination or you've cut down on certain foods and you've lost weight, you've lost body fat just by changing the foods you ate, not by counting calories. Drop in the comments below and there's your answer right there. And I know that. I know that by saying that. Drop it fucking right now. Facebook. I know people watching on Facebook have had this experience. I want you to prove that. And then after we sign off Instagram, you go over to Facebook and you check that out. Uh, let's see. Are you saying experiment and figure out what's right for me? Yes. That's yes. Yes. That's what, I, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But there's a certain way to experiment to do it properly. Dermaglow Pro. Thank you, Swole, because you do genuinely care. I'm glad I am part of your community. Absolutely. For sure. For sure. I'm addicted to pasta slash gluten. I wonder why you're addicted usually you get addicted to things that aren't serving you. You're getting addicted to uh, chemicals or getting addicted to things that you're just used to it. Are you addicted to it or you're just used to it? Cut it out. Cut it out. You don't need pasta. For example, like not eating pasta. Oh, you're not going to be healthy anymore. That's like No one's ever died from not eating pasta. Quite the opposite. Quite the opposite. I miss Florida. I'm in the north in Canada. Woo. It's like where the White Walkers are. Fuck that shit. It's hot today. I was getting like, I was walk outside this you know, earlier today. It's hot. Tibor, since the elimination diet, I'm down 21 pounds. I'm certainly not counting calories. 21 fucking pounds. Okay. Happy smile chick on Instagram. Yup. 11 pounds elimination diet so far. No calorie counting. That's ridiculous. 21 pounds, 11 pounds. And we're not talking, oh, I lost a pound. 11 fucking pounds. 21 fucking pounds. Now, granted, that's probably a lot of water too, which is fine. And a lot of times I'll say, no, a lot of that's water weight. Yeah, but that's extra water weight. What do you think think happens when you have inflammation? Your body retains extra water. When you have extra fat, your body, it's not dry, crispy, crusty fat. It's wet. You know, it's moisture. Your body retains water. So when you have inflammation, when you store fat, your body is retaining extra water, bloating, because your body needs water to deal with inflammation and all those things. So it's all of it. It's all of it. It's body fat and it's water, but that has to go too. I don't care if you have 50 pounds extra of water. That water's got to go. So even if you lost 20 pounds in a month, all right, well, most of that's water. It's still extra. You still got to get rid of it. Jeffrey, day one, eliminating sugar and gluten today, feeling pretty weak and sleepy. Is that keto flu I hear about? No, you're not in ketosis. You just cut out sugar and gluten. That's not keto at all. You're feeling weak because you're in a crash. Your body is expecting sugar. We'll have to do another episode on what you're actually feeding because you're not feeding your stomach and you're not feeding yourself. Essentially, when you eat, you're feeding your bacteria. And your bacteria is your garden that you've grown over the course of decades. And when you don't give the bacteria that's been thriving on sugar and gluten all these years, you don't give them the food that they want, they crave it. And the enteric system is like signaling to your brain, give us gluten, give us carbs. That's where those cravings come from. It's not you craving them. You don't need them. It's the bacteria that you've taught to expect this crap. And you literally have to starve them out. You have to not eat it and they'll die off. 
and the better bacteria will survive. Thoughts on rice? Switch to brown rice? No, 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 no. If anything, white rice. Stay away, stay away from brown rice. Brown rice is just really hard to digest, uh, and rice can be a common inflammatory because rice is a grain. Um, so rice can be issue for a lot of people to digest, but white rice is better than brown. What are your go-to foods in your everyday diet? I do uh, I, I do grass-fed beef a lot. I do kale, um, salad, spinach, olives, a lot of fat, coconut oil, MCT oil, grass-fed butter. I said beef, sweet potatoes, yucca, a lot of yucca, um, broccoli, any kind of vegetables. Vegetables are great. Everyone says, like, oh, he's only eating beef. A ton of veggies, ton of veggies, a lot of fat, and moderate protein. I just ordered a bunch of grass-fed ground beef. It's like 75% lean, a lot of fat. Those are some of them. What up, Pop? Cut it live tonight, bro. What up? What up, Barry? Brad, cut out sugar-free energy drinks last week and have felt 10 times better. It's the caffeine. It's the artificial sweeteners. Don't forget what your body's used to. So whoever said before um, about cutting out sugar and grain or whatever for one day, You'll feel better. You just got to give it a couple of days. You got to give it a couple of days. Remember, you're, if, you're doing, if you're doing an elimination, you're doing it for six weeks. So one day is nothing. You're going to feel weird because you're going to feel sluggish because you don't have that sugar boost. You're having a crash. How do you prep your yucca? I boil it. I put some salt, pepper, and garlic in there. MCT oil? Yes. Just question marks. Yes. Yes. MCT oil. It's an extract from coconut oil. Uh, let's see. How about kidney beans? Beans are legumes and generally should be avoided. Uh, some people might be able to pressure cook them and not have issues, but in an elimination diet, I highly recommend getting rid of beans. Um, I, when, every time I've eaten beans, I've never felt any benefit whatsoever, but lectin content in beans can be highly inflammatory and issues for the body. So if you're going to consume beans, first off, I would recommend getting rid of them and do an elimination process with them. But if you're going to consume them, I would recommend doing some kind of pressure cooking that will destroy and damage the lectin proteins that cause inflammation commonly. I, I don't like beans at all. Anytime I've ever had beans in the past, I've never felt anything but just gas and no benefit. Even rice, I never felt any real benefit from rice. Sweet potatoes and yucca, I feel pumped. I feel lean. I feel great. So I just stick to that. Boom. That's just my staple. What about the wild rice? Rice is rice. It's hard to digest. It's harder to digest. I don't care what anyone says. Quinoa, all that shit, it's just harder to di digest. Wild rice, all the fiber, the husks, it's just hard to digest. And when I say that, try it. Literally, get if you're eating rice regularly, get rid of it for six weeks, do the elimination diet, and then add rice back in one of those days. After six weeks, eat rice once or twice that day, then go back to your elimination and clean out, and then do that, let's say, on Monday, and then wait and observe your body and keep a diary Tuesday and Wednesday, the same, same type of shit that we talk about in Solenormous X. We go through the elimination diet process. Then you cut out the food. You go back to your elimination. You observe for two days because sometimes it takes 24 to 48 hours to see the results. And you observe. If you're fine with it, you have no issues, then maybe it's okay for you. Maybe your body doesn't really react that poorly to it. A lot of people do. Asparagus is okay. What is yucca? Y-U-C-A or Y-U-C-C-A. Yucca, it's a resistant starch. It's like a sweet potato. You can find it in the frozen section. You can also find it. It's like those, uh, you might find it in the ethnic section. It's a very Latin food. It'll look like a tree root. It'll look like a root. You have to like peel it and then boil it. But you can also get it, um, you know, pre-done and frozen. You just put it in a pot, boil it for like 20, 25 minutes, season it. It's delicious. It's fucking great. Coming from a Spanish background, eliminating rice and beans is such a difficult task. Is it really? Is it difficult or are you just used to it? It's not difficult. You just have it. It's amazing our habits. It's not difficult. Like don't, here's the thing. Don't put words or don't put things into it that aren't true, right? It's not difficult. It's very simple. You just don't eat rice and beans for a set period of time. You just don't, that's it. It's not a difficult task. It's extremely easy. You just don't eat those things. When you as attach the word difficult, then it makes it a struggle and it's so hard. And oh, because I was born in this country, because I've been eating this my whole life, it's so hard. It's not hard. You just don't do it. 
It's those addictions. It's that mentality that's so difficult. It kind of gives you an excuse almost to not do it because it's so hard and challenging. Get the fuck out of here. You just eat different foods. You just don't eat those things. And what I'm saying is the elimination diet is not never. And that's the thing. It's the elimination diet is not get rid of these foods forever. Like get rid of the, get rid of these foods forever. Fuck you. You can never have them again. You might do the elimination diet for six weeks. You might go back and realize I can't have beans unless I pressure cook them. When I have rice, I feel a little fatigued, but not that bad. Then you know that if you ever have rice or let's say you go out to dinner with friends and okay, rice is on the menu and you have rice, you know the consequences. This is all that I'm saying. It's going to teach you about your body. So then if you have rice, not that you're going to die, not that you're going to have cancer and your fucking dog is going to die because you ate a bowl of rice one day, but you're going to know that if you have rice, it's going to put you in the bathroom. It's going to give you crazy migraines. You're going to be throwing up. You're going to be sick. Or if you have rice, you get a little bloated, but you know, maybe once in a while you have it, but at least you know the trade-off. You know, you might feel a little bit shitty afterwards. You might, you might not. You might be really bad. You might. So, right. It's like, that's all it's, you learn about your body, but then you make your own decisions. If you learn that rice is not good for your body reacts poorly to rice, and then you want to go ahead and eat rice every day, who am I to stop you? Just know that if you're eating inflammatory foods all the time, that your body is constantly defending itself, it could lead to other, it could lead to chronic disease. It could, I don't, I'm not saying it could lead to heart disease. It could lead to cancer. It could lead to diabetes. It could lead to other kind of gut issues. It could lead to arthritis. It could lead to these things chronically over time. Of course, you know, I'm not trying to make it, you know, be dramatic, but it's a fact. And where do you think these autoimmune issues come from? It comes from the food that we're consuming. So all I'm saying is when you learn more about your body, you can make informed decisions. That's literally the be all end all of anything that I'm talking about with nutrition. If you know what your body will react to well, and you know what your body will react to poorly, you can make the proper decision for your life. If you know that this food's going to fuck you up and you want to eat it anyway, that's your choice. Is Greek yogurt also an inflammatory food? I see it as a great source of protein. I see it as a pasteurized processed dairy product. So I don't agree that it's a great source of protein. Just because it says it has a lot of protein doesn't mean it's not causing other issues um, from the sugar and from the lactose and from the issues in it. So is it? I don't consume, I never have Greek yogurt ever. I don't. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't, but also doesn't mean that your body is reacting well to it. So I would recommend, again, if you eat it regularly, eliminate it and test. Chicken and rice, good to drop weight in a caloric deficit. I don't like rice, and I think chicken is a weak protein. So when you talk about caloric deficits, you start playing with different numbers. I don't like talking about calories. I think that's just way too con- I, I think that's just way too much of a conversation in the fitness community to the point where it's just like it's overshadowing the fact that you're eating the wrong foods to begin with. Like fuck calories. Really? Your body has those measurements. Your body knows when you've had enough, when you need food. We just forget that because we're so programmed to look at the calories and thus we get fed this garbage food. That's it. The addiction excuses point towards an addiction to a food or a lifestyle you've been thought to live by your entire life. I agree. Taste by freedom. Taste those gains. Dermaglow Pro. Thank you, Swole. It's beauty sleep time here in New Jersey. Catch you again soon. Absolutely. Jeffrey Vival. Intermittent fasting. How many hours do you feel works best? Opinion. Experimentation. You can test that out yourself. I usually never do a complete fast. If I don't eat till the evening, I'm still drinking Bulletproof coffee, so I'm still getting my fats in. I never really do a complete fast. Every once in a while, if I don't make my coffee in the morning, I might just say, okay, I'm going to eat till later. Um, I don't like doing consistent intermittent fasting. I find consistently I just get weak after a while, but every once in a while, if I don't eat earlier in the day, I'm like, all right, I'll just eat later. I don't stress it too much. What are your staple foods for breakfast? Eggs, beef, yucca, sweet potatoes, like the foods I said earlier that I eat breakfast, like there's no specific breakfast. Food is food. Fuck breakfast foods or oatmeal or cereal. What else can I eat for breakfast? Uh, you can have beef for breakfast if that's what you want. Like there's no reason why you can't eat foods at any time of the day. There's no reason for that. That's just some kind of like, I don't know what the fuck happened or where we created that shit. 
you know, she's like, you know, breakfast cereals and oatmeal. Like, what? Why can't you have those things in the evening? You know, bacon, eggs, you can have that in the evening, but steak and beef for breakfast with sweet potato, that's weird. No, mash up sweet potatoes, like, or whatever. Like, you know, you can still eat. Food is food. Dude, you're always on fucking point, man. Ah, I try. Look, these are a lot of, and I'm not saying these are all facts. These are opinions too, but I try to use common sense. You know, I'm passionate about what I talk about with the elimination process because it's a blanket statement. Like, I'm not telling anyone to eat a certain food. I'm telling you the process and why you want to do this to figure out what's best for you. That's why I can, that's why I push it so hard because I don't, I'm adamant against giving people, oh, eat these foods. No, I'll tell you what I eat, but that doesn't mean that you're going to like it. You have to fucking put the effort in it. Is it easy to, it's very easy. It's very simple. How should I put I put it that way. It's very simple to, to do the elimination diet. It's not always easy. It's a challenge because you're cutting out foods. You're, you're habitual. You're a habitual creature. You're a human being. Human beings are creatures of habit. <laughs> Pizza or leftover cake, though. That's okay for breakfast. <laughs> Fuck yeah. All right, fam. That was a hell of an episode. Love it, love it, love it. So remember, you can catch all these episodes on SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts. Those of you watching on Facebook, if you have not yet left a Facebook review, please, when we sign off, even even on Instagram, if you have not yet gone over to Facebook and left a review on my Facebook page, if you love the swole, if you love the show, if you're a member of Swolenormous X, whatever you are, please go over to Facebook and drop a review, especially if you watch or listen on iTunes or a podcast fan, leave a review. I, it means the world to me when you uh, drop some sentences, a couple words here uh, and there, drop some stars on Facebook. I would tell you to leave a review on Instagram, but that feature doesn't exist yet. So please go over to Facebook and click on reviews and leave a couple words. I'd love to give you a shout out and uh, screenshot it and share it with uh, Instagram and Facebook community. I really appreciate it. Uh, tons, tons, tons. Remember all the episodes, podcast, SoundCloud, Apple podcast, Google music, uh, YouTube, everything swole enormous, Twitter, Snapchat, fucking Instagram, everything at swole enormous. Um, just, you could, you could find me everywhere, absolutely everywhere. So any questions, remember you can hit me up, um, message me, DM, Facebook, email, this, that, and the other. And if you have not yet checked out my ebook, the seven pillars of swole enormous over 60,000 downloads, if you haven't checked it out, the link is in my Instagram bio and you could also swipe up my Instagram story. So if you want a great place, a great starting point, you want to get the foundation, the whole idea and principles and um, the beginning of Swole Normous uh, to get started. If you're new to the community, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. So peace, McGee's fam. Deuce, McGoose. Tomorrow I'll see you for episode 655. Peace out. Oh, oh, oh. Papa Swolio is hangry as fuck. Later, fam.